sculptures, the white sculptures you're talking about, they begin as very dark clay. So actually, the clay I work with in my studio is pretty dark, right? And then that gets cast. I work for the sculptures, I work in clay, pretty dark clay. And then I cast that, and that becomes plaster. Mm. So the plaster becomes white, um, which is a cast of the original material. So actually, the black paint and the clay are much more linked than you would maybe imagine, you know. But plaster, um, um, when I draw on top of plaster, um, it's black on top of white, right? And when you do white on top of black, which the black paintings, I worked chalk on top of black, it's very similar. It's a very similar discussion. You know, if you add black on top of white, or black on top of, um, sorry, black on top of white, or white on top of black, the discussion is really similar. It's, it's more about like structure and contrast and, um, and these issues. So it's very similar issues, but the clay begins dark. So when I was working with the black paint, that actually felt like clay to me. Yeah, it felt much more linked to clay. Um, and much more linked to that material, you know. The idea of walking, the, of, of movement, is uh, quintessential to sculpture, and you see it again and again and again, which is, sculpture by its very nature is static, pretty much, right? You know it's not gonna move. I mean, you can make a kinetic sculpture, but, you know, if you're looking at an object, part of the dilemma in the, in the piece is that it takes your space, right? When a painting's on the wall, you, you don't, it doesn't challenge your reality. It, you know that that's a painting on a wall. Whereas the sculpture kind of challenges your reality and it's static, right? So the great challenge within sculpture is movement in life, okay? You're making uh, a kind of monument to death when you make a sculpture and you're trying to deny that at the same time. So the idea of movement in sculpture, the walking man is, is goes through the kouros, you know, the Greek, the very first freestanding Greek sculpture of a step, right? It's like a step out of the block, but it's also a step into your space, and it's also a challenge to the idea that you look and you know that's a block of stone, right? But it's kind of moving too. It's a great dilemma in sculpture. So for me, um, that always fascinated me. You're making a moving figure that we all know isn't moving. That that uh, bringing that dichotomy to the to the front to the, to the thing is to me fascinating in sculpture. When sculpture appears to move and, it, and it, you know it doesn't. When it appears to be in your reality, but it's not. Those were ideas I got really fascinated by in sculpture, but they're also really the, the genesis of art, which is we all know art has no real reason, it has no real purpose, it's not real, right? But it somehow feels real, or, or, or the dilemma within it, um, sort of um, makes you sensitive to these things. So when I did the moving figures and the energy, and da, 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 they were very, um, I wanted the sculptures to be filled with this um, kinetic energy, even though they're, they're flat, or they're super fragile, or they're just objects, you know. That to me was a really important dilemma at the time. But I'm not doing that anymore, so that's kind of past. Talking about it, I feel like I'm talking about someone else, interestingly because I can't do it anymore. And then, what will happen to me is I'll try and do it, and then it fails a couple of times, and then I have to stop. So that, so now that's gone. I don't know why that was, why that's gone, but it's gone for the moment. The idea of, like I almost can't see myself building a figurative sculpture anymore. Like it just feels super foreign to me. But there are these new sculptures that have another movement, right? In a way, right? But you know, but, but sculpture, I love, I love the idea of movement within sculpture, right? or, or action, or a narrative within a sculpture, you know. It's a really interesting, um, sort of strange dilemma, you know. My sculptures often are, uh, there's a process I use where I pour the plaster to make forms, I pour the plaster flat, and I always use symmetry and dissymmetry. It's funny you say that because the sculptures um, don't come across as symmetrical, but they often, in their origin, 
they are very symmetrical. I just, they just get kind of pulled apart as they get made. But I often make like two arms next to each other or two legs. And then, you know, because they're handmade, the symmetry starts. You know, when you, what I like about hand making things is things start to go wrong and they're slightly off, even if you want it to be perfectly symmetrical. And you feel that in these two. I'm someone, the way my brain works, I can never do perfect symmetry. And, and then you play with that, you play with that space between symmetry. You know, there's the idea of Giotto, you know the famous story about Giotto? To get the job, to be able to do, uh, one of the frescoes, he did a perfect circle for the, I don't know, the Pope or the Mid one of these people, he was able to draw freehand a perfect circle. And um, when they celebrated him and said, wow, that's amazing, he was super young. He said, I'm gonna spend my whole life to learn how not to be able to do that, right? That was his bane, actually, being able to do a perfect circle, right? And that's, that's art, it's like how you, between that perfect circle and, and fucking up the perfect circle, right? That's, that's, that's like Picasso. Like Picasso is about fucking up the perfect circle, you know? So there's always that, there's that journey, you know? You, you learn how to get good at something, and that's its greatest danger. You know, just as you get really good, it's like death's right there. You know, so it's like, then the dissymmetry has to happen and the pain and all of that of falling out of whack, you know. So yeah, it's a good question about symmetry.